Ellen G. White Why did she make use of others' words? Ellen G. White and the Accusation of Plagiarism, Stealing Others' Words In a statement made by Ellen White in her introduction to the book The Great Controversy, she openly writes of her use of others' materials. She states that in some cases the author is given, in others it is not. Why not? Because the purpose of the material is not to quote the author as an authority, but rather that the material clearly expressed what Ellen needed to write, better than she could have worded it herself. So someone might ask, why Ellen G. White at all? In Adventist history is recorded that God first called two men to the prophetic office before he called Ellen White. The first was William Hoy, an African-American. The second was Hazen Foss, who initially accepted the call, then rejected it as it entailed too much self-sacrifice. Why would God call a woman, whose status will be questioned, an uneducated person, third grade education, a person with a handicap, a girl threw a rock at her head from which Ellen suffered lasting disability? Why? One answer might be so that the power of God would be seen at work. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, My strength is made perfect in weakness. Selected phrases from the introduction to the book The Great Controversy by Ellen Gould White Through the illumination of the Holy Spirit, the scenes of the long-continued conflict between good and evil have been opened to the writer of these pages. As the Spirit of God has opened to my mind the great truths of his word, I have been bidden to make known to others that which has thus been revealed. In some cases, where a historian has so grouped together events as to afford, in brief, a comprehensive view of the subject, his words have been quoted. But in some instances, no specific credit has been given since the quotations are not given for the purpose of citing that writer as authority, but because his statement affords a ready and forcible presentation of the subject. Some have accused Ellen White. Uh, it says that Ellen White copied from other writers. Have you heard that before? I'll tell you, boy, if there's ever a, a, a ridiculous argument. Have you ever read the Bible and noticed how many times they, they quote each other and give no credit or respect? In the 1800s, when Christian writers wrote, they often uh, quoted large sections from one another, and they considered it very bad form or taste to say, I'm giving credit to this Christian pastor for this and to this Christian for that. That was considered getting the glory for the person instead of giving the glory to God. There was never any accusations in her day or any suit brought against her for plagiarism. You know, Jesus, when he was hanging on the cross, said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Do you realize he was quoting Psalm 22 and he didn't give David credit for that? <laughs> Jude quotes Peter. Peter quotes Paul. And they don't give credit. 10% of the New Testament, Jesus is quoting the Old Testament. Most of the time, he doesn't cite the author. And so... If, Many times in my sermons, I read inspired things and I, my mind seizes. I say, praise the Lord, that's true. Then I'm standing before people and it comes back to me and I share it with them as I'm preaching. And I don't even remember where I read it. But I knew that the principle, the statement was true. Number 13. What three things does Paul command regarding prophecy? 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 20. Despise not prophesying. Prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good, friends. I'd like to invite you to prove the prophets, friends. Apply the biblical tests. You can't be down on something you're not up on, can you? And there's enough evidence there where I think that it's worthy of investigation. Would you be willing to say, as I close with prayer tonight, Lord, I'm willing to take an honest, objective look at the ministry and the writings of Ellen White and see what it does in my heart. That's why I am still 
uh, in love with the, the messages because it moves me to want to be like Jesus. Is that your desire, friends? Father in heaven, I pray that each person watching now will, with an open mind and heart, investigate this gift of prophecy that you've given the church. We ask in Jesus.